from the public. Any uh, people from the public attending? We do not. Okay, and we got Sam with us. Sam, welcome. Thank you for coming tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me. We'll uh, review the minutes from the January meeting. Everybody have a chance to look them over? Didn't see anything outlandish. Oh, they look good to me too. So we'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve. Any seconds? We'll approve the minutes from the January meeting. We didn't get much choice, Cindy. We had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, I guess we got Sam's up next for Eversource. Thank you for coming, Sam. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, you want me to go right into it? I can share my screen. Yeah, please go right ahead. Okay. So the Schedule maintenance for this year, 2023, for the city of Norwalk, um, we're scheduled to trim 73 miles, roughly. Um, it's about 33% of the total lines in Norwalk. When I say lines, I'm talking about roadside distribution. And um, we have three substations that we're focusing on this year. Um, one is along Riverside Ave by 123, which is the 9S, um, Flax Hill, which is the 24As, which drop down into Rowayton and feed the Norwalk Hospital, and then head west along Route 1, and then there's a small portion of circuit over by Pepper Ridge substation, which is on the border of Westport and Norwalk. Norwalk has the, can you see that? Or did I change the screen? You still see the map, Sam. Okay. Um, let me see if I can adjust my, Okay. So the trim schedule for Norwalk, those 73 miles, so roughly 33%, as I had mentioned. Norwalk, the city of Norwalk has 220, 230 miles of line in and around the city. And we've started after our appointment, we had a meeting with Paul, Chris Torrey, and Jose Ortiz, and the liaison for um, Eversource and the city of Norwalk. And we went over the, the schedule and the plan and were starting on the permissioning process, which is pretty much knocking on doors and leaving door hangers for the process of, of permissioning. What we're looking for is um, simply regular maintenance ske schedule pruning. So maintenance pruning is, if you could picture the aerial lines that run along the road, we're looking at eight to 10 feet to either side of the conductor, 15 feet overhead and 10 feet below. And anywhere there's already pre-established limbs that are outside of that 15 feet that are over hanging the lines, those limbs are going to remain. Um, so we're essentially just trimming to reduce what we call grow-ins or anything that migrates back into the utility protection zone. Um, with 73 miles, we're going to run um, right up pretty much close to the beginning of September. 
Uh, and uh, I work very closely with Chris, Tori, as well as um, Jose Ortiz for any hazard trees that are in the city right away. Uh, we identify those and then um, seek approval from the city for removal if, if they're a valid hazard. We're not looking at opening up the lines. We're not looking at doing anything outside of the regular scheduled trimming this year. Um, I did supply Paul in the city with a road list of all of the roads that will be affected by the pruning, identifying both private roads as well as state roads. And then the town roads, of course, are not highlighted on that list. Um, for all the roads that would be affected by the trimming. Um, the process is as it has been through the years where we permission, we work very closely with Paul and Chris Torrey um, for identification of trees that um, would pose risk to the overhead lines and if we can seek approval for removal, we will. If the town feels that the tree doesn't warrant removal, we don't push. I'm going to carry forward this year the same policy that I had last year for roadside distribution, that we will not be using any herbicide in this process. And it's going to be an ongoing process right up until the beginning of September, maybe until the end of September to complete the 73 miles in the city of Norwalk. So if you have any questions or concerns, I'll be in close contact with Paul and the city as the process uh, moves forward and uh, communication with key um, town officials as well as um, key groups like your own um, as far as the process. Thank you for coming tonight, Sam. We appreciate you taking the time to do it. Uh, as you mentioned, you, you started doing the permission processing. Uh, there is a large area too this year down in Rowayton. Uh, what I would probably suggest is as much public outreach ahead of time as you can do. Uh, talking with the uh, Six Taxing District Commission, uh, maybe at one of their meetings, talking with them. I can put you in touch with the commissioners down there and then any other neighborhood groups that are established groups. Uh, I would recommend highly trying to talk with them because that way there at least the word gets out. People are aware of what you're doing, why you're doing it before you're just showing up with the permissioning slips and the postings. I would be happy to do that, Paul. And um, if um, if you could give me any insight on to those key key organizations or those uh, private uh, roads, private organizations that you'd like me to reach out to, I'd be happy to. Yeah, I can provide you with that information as well as the uh, council members in the various areas too. We can give you that information so that that way there, everybody can be included and they know what exactly is going on. Yeah, I'd like to do that sooner than later. So over the course of the next couple of weeks, we'll do that. Okay. <laughs> I got, I got one question for Sam. It seems like that's about a third of the lines mileage wise for city of Norwalk. Yeah. Is that, is that normal that you do a third of the town per year or is that an aggressive year? Or? That's a good question, Richard. No, it's not an aggressive year at all. Some towns vary and it's on a four year rotation. So four years ago, so 2019, we did very similar mileage. There are years where it's very heavy. We may be in the 100, 150 mile range and some years it might be very light. Um, I can look at what it's been historically for, for that four year rotation. But I mean, I have towns, uh, for example, Reading, has about 150 miles of line. We're trimming 110 of them this year. So it really varies depending on the town and depending on the current schedule as far as that trimming. So there's 16,000 miles in the state of Connecticut. 
and we have to trim them every four years. So it varies. Sometimes it does change based on performance of the circuit. We have a circuit that has heavy outages historically that are tree related or vegetation related. We may shift a circuit sooner than later to try to uh, reduce those amount of outages. I was looking at the history uh, for the city of Norwalk and for being a tree city, um, your outages for tree related incidents is exceptionally low, um, which is really good. Less than it's 25% of all outages are tree related. The average in the state is high thirties, low forties and heavy um, towns can be as much as 50 to 60% of their outages being tree related. And I think it's a good point to speak to the coordinated efforts between the city of Norwalk and Eversource for the vegetation um, management and having those outages as low as they are. I hope that answered your question. No, that helps quite a bit. Thank you, Sam. So coordinated efforts, just, just because I'd be remiss if I didn't bring this up. Uh, line 9S47, it's your new resiliency line through Silvermine. Um, just for the record, I mean, those poles went up five foot in the last two years. So the trimming methodology, where you tell me that the trees within 15 foot, all of a sudden now they're 10 because your poles got higher. And this would not be unexpected, and I'm sure we've talked about it when we first went through with that line. So the expectation is that you're not coming through and, and doing more work that was not understood when you put those poles up higher. So the expectation is that your trees or managing trees in the future would mean that you would not let new growth come within your zone. But if there's healthy growth and it happens to not quite, quite hit the criteria, we need to talk about it a little bit more because the criteria has changed in its place that was not about trees that change or our, our attitude towards it because Eversource has been managing that street for over 25 years. And so you have over two decades of getting trees moved away from your lines that have created an envelope, and now you've changed the envelope. So for the record, you just need a little bit of thinking of how we go through that, that particular line. No, I, I appreciate that, Peter, and that's a very good point. Um, and the process of upgrading the system's infrastructure um, doesn't start with just throwing poles in the ground. We do do community outreach and let them know that the change for that construction would change during the construction. We're not going to set a pole and then come through and follow up with the trimming. But I, I see your point. Thank you. And as usual, like uh, Sam had said, we'll be working very closely together. And if there are items that uh, end up being thrown to the point where the tree does need to be taken down to, in order to obviously save the city money, we have them do it so that we don't end up having to take a tree down that died because of the amount of canopy that's removed two or three years down the road at the city's cost too. So we work very closely with that too to try and coordinate it. and. I know we've done many site walks that have been uh, very uh, fruitful with uh, helping to preserve and uh, reduce the amount of trees that are being cut too. Yeah, moving, moving forward, we'll plant them further away, but we have what we have. <laughs> All right, thank you, Sam. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. If you don't mind, I'd like to sit in. You're more than welcome to. Thank you. And there's an item coming up that you uh, had already mentioned too that Rich will be talking about in a few minutes that I know you you mentioned. So it's definitely good to have you say. Yeah, and I would definitely uh, heed Paul's question with reaching out to uh, the taxing districts and any uh, other groups that before you start the trimming, it'll help quite a bit. I think it's a very good point. Okay, we'll go to the next item up, which is a capital tree planting program. Paul, you're gonna update us on that? 
Okay, just to give you guys an idea of where we are budget-wise, remember we had the ARPA funding, uh, Olmstead and uh, Minutemen, and their current contract between the ARPA funds for DPW and Economic Community Development. There's $519,507 left in that envelope to be used between, like I said, Economic Community Development and DPW. And then right now, our DPW Tree Advisory Committee capital budget, we have $9,925 left in that with the other Olmstead contract too. So we've got plenty of money to do a lot of planting this spring. Knock it on the door. <laughs> Wouldn't know with the weather we had, but it is. <laughs> we had that one snowstorm to do it. Yeah, hey, one snowstorm. Well, late in the year. I, I don't know if this is. I don't know if this is new or not, Paul, but when we think about tree planting, have we ever gone back and sort of assessed what we've done in a way of sort of like a, if you had a tree master plan, you might go back 10 years into it and say, what have we been successful at in terms of street coverage? I'm looking, I'm looking for the physical result. So if we go to Beach Road, Richard and I go to Beach Road and we set out, we know what we planted, have we been successful? Uh, in getting that canopy covered, and is, do these funds, you know, go to more to make that success if we can get it? I don't really have an answer, but I just, just, just thought just popped in my mind. Do we know where we've actually had proof on the ground and sort of gone back and checked what we've accomplished? We, when we've gone out and done some of the uh, uh, geolocating and put it into our GIS system, you take a look at some of the trees that we've planted, and as we've now gotten. Uh, a more sophisticated geolocating system to do the work. You look at what's there with the pictures and stuff on the people that have been doing it with the interns, they're taking pictures of six and eight inch trees. Elmwood Avenue, there's some very large trees up there that were planted back in the beginning of the program in 2006 and seven. So it, it's, it's definitely accomplishing what we wanted to do because we've got quite a few trees that have grown significantly since the two and a half to three inch caliper trees that we put in. So maybe we just need to dovetail and maybe be specific about what they're looking for, say on Beach Road, you know, make sure they get Beach Road and we, and Rich and I know what we planted out there with you. It's like, did it, was it successful given the data they pull back? So maybe there's just one more analytical piece that's more focused. And then as far as the development of the planting uh, locations for the spring, I'd like to continue with that. Anybody that's got locations, please provide them to me. I got a variety of locations left over from what we had done in the fall, plus the meeting that we had down in uh, South Norwalk uh, with Jessica Bonacek and the group for the uh, MLK Corridor Initiative and where they'd like to see trees. Rich was at that meeting. So we've got a lot of uh, locations that we have to go put them in, continuing work with the uh, housing authority at their sites. But if anybody's got any other ones, please pass them along. And maybe what I'd like to do is offline from the committee meetings, if we have a little meeting for brainstorming locations in the next maybe few weeks to month, it would be helpful so that we can get all of them in the ground. and. The goal, I'd like to see if we can get another 200 trees planted this spring. 200, that's a lot. That'd be good. There's two. We, we ended up last spring, we did the 171. So if we can hit 200, that would be nice. Fall, we did 230 for 401. I'd like to see if we can at least hit the four 450 mark for 2023. Get the stakes out. Let's go. I know I brought it up uh, last meeting, and I'll bring it up again. Just um, the contractors don't have any problem with the spring plantings versus fall plantings with the drought conditions we had for the summer. I haven't heard anything at all. And I know with what we've gotten now with rain, uh, the drought conditions aren't nearly what they were. Uh, so we haven't had any issues with that at all. Because even though we haven't gotten snow, we have had quite a bit of precipitation. Oh, yeah, quite a bit now. But yes. It was brutal. I haven't heard them complaining or uh, saying that they've had issues with what they've planted. And Olmstead has gone back and done some of the replanting that they had to do uh, over at Sonia's area. That's one location that they've done a lot of the replanting. So I've not heard too much, but they do have some that they have to do. They're aware of it. But 
But it, I'm, I'm bringing it up because it was probably one of the higher attrition years that they've encountered with spring plantings due to the drought. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. Is it worth having dialogue with them to ask them if they would prefer to put more in in the spring versus fall or vice versa to see, get their feedback on it if they haven't brought anything? I can check. I can check with them. I don't know, Rich. I mean, I, I mean, let, let them tell us because they may have a busy spring. <laughs> there may be other factors we can't control. <laughs> All right. So let's let's get it that. out there. If they can't pull it off, they'll let us know. If they have issues. Yeah. I, I think we're also going to have trouble getting trees this year. I'm getting the sense from contractors now that the nursery stocks are low. How oh, so? Just I can't get the varieties. I mean, I can't get five to six foot. Can't get five to six uh, Norway spruce. I got to go down a size. Excuse me. I can't get seven to eight. I got to come down to five to six. Just some of the suppliers are low. You, you, you're seeing. You're starting to get hit from two years of non-planting. Okay. Any other of the deciduous trees? Not offhand. I'm just. I'm hearing. I'm just hearing supplies. I can't get Appalachian spring dogwoods. They're, they have a blight in the south. I can't get those for projects in DC or up here. So there are just some quirks in the nursery tree that I'm just are trickling down. And I'm hearing Merle. I don't usually hear this stuff in February. Okay, that's interesting. Well, I can have a conversation because what I was going to do is talk and maybe uh, bring both contractors in for a quick meeting, just go over some of that stuff with them so I can discuss that if their preferences are spring or fall and also supply chain issues for various species. Because they can't do it in the spring, they'll do it in the fall, except oaks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tree availability uh, would play an impact on that. They did the replacing in, uh, on my property because I don't recall seeing anyone out here and which trees they replaced. Okay. I know that Gary had told me that they were doing some of the uh, uh, Trees were the uh, arborvitaes. They were replacing some of those, but we can check and make sure. And in the spring, we're going to walk them all again to make sure that they were done too, that all of them were done. Okay. Okay, we'll move on. Next item. Um, no, this is me. Yeah. Update on 2023 Arbor Day cleanup event. So last year we did a pre-Arbor Day cleanup event along MLK um, in lieu of the plantings that we had scheduled down there. So it kind of accomplished a couple of things. It wasn't a public event. It was something Paul and I worked on and put together where we had uh, tree companies come out and we pruned and removed a couple of dangerous trees and cleared some underbrush in anticipation of doing the plantings on MLK. And this is like really new, so hasn't really gone anywhere yet other than making it on the agenda. <laughs> so I'm just talking about it for the first time, but I did talk with Paul about this last week about doing another uh, pre-Arbor Day event for this coming spring. So we're talking about doing a similar event. We try to do it couple of days prior to Arbor Day, so it doesn't take away from the actual Arbor Day event. And I'm glad Sam's here because uh, last year, uh, Eversource participated in the cleanup that we did along MLK. We had the city crews, we had private companies do it. And Peter would be interested because we're targeting the location for this year to be the NVRT over on uh, Riverside Avenue, which I think, Peter, you're working on doing some plantings over in there. So this may correspond into where you're doing the plantings if any remedial pruning or cleanup work has to be done in the targeted areas prior yeah. to the planting. No, I think I think we, we can put, I think any effort there is well spent. High visibility, people are gonna use that piece of the trail. It's well spent and it's an ecosystem. When I talked with TMP, they had uh, recommended an area if, uh, because the area over by Riverside is still under construction. So they recommended an area between Union Park down toward 
the back of West Avenue, that area. So if we had some of that section of the trail, Richard and I are gonna go out and take a look at it, see what it looks like, and then maybe target that area this year. Since we don't necessarily wanna go on to the area, it would be good to go over to Riverside, but we don't necessarily wanna go onto it while it's under construction because the con it's still under the contractor's control. The area between Union Park and I guess Belden or, or West Avenue, it's pretty harsh. So take a good look. It, it needs help. <laughs> okay. It's harsh. We, we got quite a bit accomplished uh, last year. It was a half day event. I think we had seven or eight uh, crews out there. And we just kind of like hopscotched all the way down MLK. And uh, we got everything done that we wanted to. And then some, I think. Yeah. Uh, it was a really good event and it was before we were going to be planting out there so it worked out well so that's why we talked about possibly doing it again this year and i know i had talked with sam a little bit and he had mentioned possibly uh getting a couple of lewis crews for half a day again this year like last year yes absolutely Those crews were there the city crews are there so if they can participate that would be well appreciated um, it's kind of a good location in the sense that it checks off a lot of boxes. You know, we just got the pollinator pathway, people down there in Norwalk Valley River Trail. Um, it's targeted for some plantings that Peter's working with the Tree Alliance on. Um, there's no traffic control needed on this because we're kind of off-road on it. Uh, there's no overhead uh, utility lines we have to worry about. So it makes it safe for the private companies to go there and work on the trees. So we're working on it. I don't have a date just set just yet, but I see that Paul, you put a couple of days prior to Arbor Day, which I think is a good targeted uh, calendar date. So we'll have to start hustling up and look at the site. I'm gonna review the site with uh, Paul and we'll get everything hammered out and then we'll update everybody at the next meeting for that as well. And then mm -hmm. that's the uh, update on the actual Arbor Day event for our week now. Uh, one quick thing I want to do, I just want to welcome uh, Anthony Casuto to the meeting too. Uh, you know, glad to see that you were able to join us and see uh, if it's something you'd be interested in long term. So thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Uh, the update for the uh, planning for the 2023 Arbor Day, number eight in elementary school, we had the first planning meeting on Friday uh, and pr Principal Cummings and uh, the people from Doubletree were there. Uh, we laid out the program like we've done just about every other year. Uh, there are a couple of things that we are going to do a little differently this year. I know we are going to try something that Erica had recommended with getting some books for the kids. And in talking with Principal Cummings, uh, we've got an idea for some books and she thought it would probably be better uh, for the tree related books if we could supply them to the teachers of each one of the classrooms. So we're gonna look to get maybe 30 of the Fandex books that we have for like tree identification with the information and the facts so that the teachers can uh, work with the kids in each of the classrooms on that. And then we'll look at doing some of the, they, they had thought that we'd probably want to continue with the uh, uh, seedlings like we've done. I know we were thinking about trying to do books for all of the kids, but from talking with the school, they thought that that would get very expensive because we're talking about 400 and change children. Yeah. So we'll take and do a combination of what we've been doing a little bit in the past, as well as getting the books and giving the books to the teachers uh, related to tree stuff so that they can teach the lessons to the students in the classes. But overall, it went well. Our next meeting uh, is gonna be at the end of March and we're in good shape moving forward with that. And I know Sam had talked about possibility of a couple of trees and some of the seedlings and stuff. So we'll be talking with you again soon, Sam. Sounds good. Great. Okay. Uh, do we have any other uh, business that we want to go over before we wrap it up? Well, I'm not volunteering for anything yet. 
not volunteering, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> I, I think I think just bringing up maybe when you think about just assessing what we've done long term and using the GIS program, I think we can use that effectively to basically sort of do a check point about are, are we doing the right things. No, I think you bring up a great point. I'm just kind of shocked you brought that up because I went down a beach road a couple of weeks ago and that, and also Richards Avenue. Those are two uh, roads where we did large plantings on and the trees, the size of the trees is. It's, it's over, we've been there eight years already. It's not. Nothing. Yeah, they've, they've really put some size on. It's pretty impressive when I go back and I look at it. I'm like, wow, we planted those. I go, they look pretty good. So the volume is like increased tremendously. No, it, you know, it, it, do we need more? That's the question, you know, so that's the assessment. I think so, uh, there's a couple of spots that need plugging in. So there's, uh, I think there's definitely a few more down there we could do. And that maybe should be something on the list for this spring or fall. No, definitely. Just get our GIS crew out there to give us a check stone and we'll see where the holes are. <laughs> yeah, good point. So yeah, I would like to maybe I give you uh, Rich and Peter a call in the uh, next uh, week or two and maybe see if we can have a planning meeting and see if we can get together and knock out a bunch of locations combined with what the people in South Norwalk with the uh, uh, MLK Corridor Initiative grant had requested and put the pack together. And so we, we should have a pretty good robust planting for the, for the spring. Yeah, and uh, also when Paul and I get together to look at the river trail area, Peter, if you got any time or if you're in town, uh, we'd love to have you uh, tag along on that. You can maybe fill us in on some of the areas that really need the work because it sounds like you're familiar with the site. No, no, it, it's a, it needs work. And I'm actually looking at like using uh, what's uh, got Acer Pennsylvanica for a certain project and it's just these native trees we don't think about much so it's not on our list but nonetheless the north yeah. tree advisory uh north tree alliance might be able to get them easter pantomimic or oyster virginia oyster virginiana i mean these are nice trees to use along the riverbanks how many trees are you guys targeting to put in over there you know i, I only have a commitment for 10 10 but 10 is more than two <laughs> yeah you sure. think about positive all right well we'll, we'll uh shoot you an email, let you know when we're targeting on getting together and see if you can uh, tag along and be great. I got the bike in the office. I'm not that far. Yeah, it's right around the corner for you. It's easier with the bike. It's quicker. Yeah. <laughs> I want right. to well, the bike anyway. I want to get Paul on a bike. <laughs> All right, well, that should wrap it up then. Thank you, everybody. I hope everybody enjoyed the late season snow and thank you for tonight's input. Great. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. Thanks Thank a lot. And we'll have you come back again next month, Anthony. I know you had Thank a late night. Much. Sounds good. Thank you. Have Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Take care. Thank you, Sandra. Have a good night, everybody. Dude.